So I'll just say that not only I got lost on the way here, I was sure I'm the last speaker. So I thought <laughs> oh, that I'll sure, be sure. <laughs> after a lot more drinking and that you be after a lot more drinking. So I prepared accordingly. But I would say that I think um, Christina had enough results to cover for my um, more reflow and lack of results here, but it's still a teaser to my uh, poster, so come talk to me about this after um, on Wednesday. Okay, so I'll start with a question, like is this guy bold or not? So if you think he's bold, you should, I don't know, yell or drink more and then yell. <laughs> Yay. Okay. So I could argue that he's not really bold, right? And if you could see, so um, like on the back and the side, he has a lot of very short trimmed hair, but it's definitely not bold. So let's move to the other guy, which you're probably familiar with. So this is Einstein at his young age. Um, and if is this guy bold? So I think that's, the answer is clear here, right? Um, so what would happen if we take one strand of hair from his head? Just one, we pluck one. Would he be bold or not? No. So he would not be bold, that's correct, a fair assumption. He would be that. Okay, we're gonna get to the more bold or not, okay? So he would look exactly the same. I think no one here, I guess, would be able to um, tell the difference, right? It's a fair assumption. Um, Okay, what happens if I do it again? I take one more strand of hair. Is he bold? And the answer is, as you probably guessed, no, he's not bold. <laughs> now we could do it many times, so let's do it many times. Aww. So we took another, we pluck another strand of hair from his head, and is he bold now? So, I don't know, let's do it a few more times, right? Um, maybe a couple of hundred thousand of times, and at some point we'll be able to say that he got only two hair left, right? <laughs> And then we're going to do it again, and it will be only one hair left, and then finally, he'll have nothing on his hair, he'll be bald. And the big question is, what exactly happened here? Because if we agree that a guy with a full hair, a guy, let me rephrase, a guy that is not bald, okay, if we pluck one strand of hair, he stays and remains in the exact same baldness situation, in terms of how we look at bald people, so Einstein actually looks, after we pluck a lot of his hair, like this. Maybe grayer, maybe older, but not any bolder. On the other hand, we all agree that uh, this is not the case, and if we just keep on pulling out hairs, the guy will eventually be bold. So this is called the Boldman Paradox, and I love this paradox uh, very much because it's actually a linguistic paradox. What we see here is uh, what we call um, vagueness of language. The definition of bold is not clear. We do not know exactly what makes someone bold. When we see it, we know how to identify it. But if we try to do something by induction here, we will get nowhere. Um, this paradox comes with different flavors, with like grains of sand that I put into a pile and I never have a pile or that I remove from a pile, etc., etc. So let me now extend the metaphor a bit and talk about hairballs. So. In network science, many networks are just nice and clean. We see it in papers, it's all, it always nice communities and you see the structure and everything is beautiful. But I think we all know that when we actually take data, whether it's um, Twitter data, and I'm gonna to refer to actually the same paper that Christina just referred to, um, that's a good paper. <laughs> um, but many other papers, so the structure of the communities or whatever we want to see shows up after we did some basic stage of pruning or sparsifying the network. And there are many ways to do that. And um, there is a lot of literature how to do it in a more or less sophisticated way. But what I like about one specific way um, is that it's simple. Okay? So let's take example, two examples of two um, my well-cited papers, and actually, like, for a reason they're well-cited, they tell us a lot, we learn a lot from them. So the first one is by uh, Lada Adamic, I don't know if she's here or not, yes, not, um, about uh, the blogosphere, how it's uh, divided to um, communities. The other one is the same uh, paper by uh, Romero and Kleinberg. And what they did here, uh, they took uh, what I would call the easy or the lazy way. And it's lazy and easy in the good sense. We don't care so much about it. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain why in a second. 
and they just do some low fixed global thresholding. This is not discussed in the paper why we chose this specific threshold, but the assumption behind it is that it removes the noise, which it does. That's why we get good results when we do that on a wide array of papers. Um, now, the thing is, again, the implicit assumption behind um, this way of thresholding by a fixed um, number, fixed low weight, is that it doesn't really matter. As long as it's low, I could threshold at 3, like Romero here did. I could uh, threshold at 5 or 25. Maybe there is a big difference between 5 and 25. It may keep, keep only the strong ties. Definitely there is a difference between 5 and 100 or 2,000, right? But 2, 3, 4, 5, the differences would be minimal. And there are results about network structure to support that, that the differences are minimal. It doesn't really matter, and that's why we all do it, including me, without thinking too much. OK, we choose 3, 4, 5, and a uh, threshold. But the thing is, as I said, the thresholding is not the purpose of our work. We do it only to get rid of the noise of some incidental connections or edges that were added as you know, randomly, sort of. Um, and what we really care about is other things, whether it's uh, complex contagions or the network formation, which means what factors, if we talk from um, social science per perspective, what factors like contribute in a statistically significant way to the formation of this network that we see. Again, if the network is a hairball, so it's hard to tell. But if it's not a hairball, if we have some actual structure there, um, so we are interested very much in what's happening here. Um, so what does the thresholding affect? Uh, how is it affect if it affects like statistical inference and on network formation? So it affects it a lot. Uh, we have a paper, a short paper on that. So come and see me on Wednesday if you're interested in that. And I'll just give you a quick, um, like, you know, two quick results for that. Um, so we use uh, exponential random graph models for our inference because it's statistically sound. And it's, I don't know how many of you um, ever used it, but it's a method that exists something like, I would say, like in the literature, it's about 10, 15 years. But in the five recent years, people start using it more and more and more and more. And one of the reasons that people are using it because it is it has some very nice mathematical properties, and if it converges, it converges with like statistical guarantees. So once you have a network, and you use the ergam, and you get results in the ergam, and it converges, you could say that this term statistically in a stati con contributed to the formation of the network in a statistical significant way. Okay, and I could like try different um, terms and have and look at the way they correspond to each other and have some explanation a story of how the network was formed. The thing is that we show that if we just change the threshold by one, two, three, etc., we get radically different results on the ergams, which um, lead to very different interpretation of the model, of the network, I'm sorry, of how it was um, formed. So just um, to um, sum it up, um, I redefine here sort of the Baldwin paradox. I would say that even a small variation makes a huge difference, a huge impact. And when we do that, we have to um, just take care and be at least aware of that, that we combine the thresholding, which everyone does for a good reason. And in the paper, we, we show when it works. Um, and we combine the uh, ERGA models, for example, which everyone, not everyone, but people use more and more. Um, it can lead to problems. And that's it. Thank you very much.